What are your feelings about keto? The way keto is recommended is completely wrong. That diet allows little pieces of shit direct access into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. So why you would want to do that is beyond my comprehension. These pieces of bacteria ride on a, a truck that carries fat into across the wall of our gut. And they're, again, there won't be a test, so they're called chylomicrons. Mm -hmm. And these LPSs literally jump on the, the truck to ride across the wall of their gut. The problem is that our immune system, our, our immune system has barcode scanners that they read what are you good? Are you any, bad? Right, exactly. It's like, you know, a passport reader. Mm -hmm. Are you on the no-fly list? Or, they can't tell the difference between a dead bacteria and a living one mm -hmm. because they're just reading the wall. Mitochondrial uncoupling is you actually allow a bunch of protons to escape without ever making energy. And the more you... So you uncouple the oxidative phosphorylation... The more you allow that to a point, the healthier you become, the longer you live, and the better your mitochondria are. And so ketones, it turns out, are the signaling molecule that tell your mitochondria to do that. Hmm. But there's oodles of other signaling molecules like polyphenols, which is one of my favorite subjects. So uh, why is that important? If you look, at super old people, they have the most uncoupled mitochondria. The best example, real world example, is there's a, a theory of aging called the cost of living hypothesis. Basically says the faster your metabolic rate, the, the shorter your lifespan. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, it's pretty accurate. Little animals don't live a long time. Big animals like you and me, an elephant, a whale live a very long time, relatively. And in general, we have a slower metabolic rate, they have a higher metabolic rate. The exception to that rule is birds. Hmm. Birds have incredible lifespans, except they have a very high metabolic rate. A hummingbird can live 12 years in captivity and has a heartbeat of 1,100 beats per minute. A parrot can live 85 to 100 years. Yeah. Why do they live so long? Mm -hmm. They have the most uncoupled mitochondria of any species. So what are the other... So let's assume, right, to your point, when you go into ketosis and when you have a keto diet, the ketones are good, but really for uncoupling your mitochondria. Correct. The most important mitochondria un to uncouple mm -hmm. are in the wall of your gut. Because as the wall of your gut ages mm -hmm. and breaks down, so do you. And there's really beautiful, elegant experiments using this cute little worm called C. elegans. Yep. And, and every experiment in C. elegans has always been reproducible in higher animals. So whatever happens in those guys, you can guarantee it, it happens wherever we've tried it. So C. elegans only ages as the wall of its gut becomes penetrable, leaky. Only ages meaning it can quite literally live indefinitely if it doesn't Correct. ever have leaky gut. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And one of the best ways to prevent or keep that wall intact is to keep your mitochondria uncoupled in the wall of your gut and all sorts of great tricks. So what are the other, because I mean, now you got me thinking, right? Like how do I quote unquote uncouple my mitochondria? Is it just consuming exogenous ketones? No. So okay. Basically a waste of time. Waste of time. HVMN. Number one, tastes awful. It, that does, it does taste horrible. Yeah. No, the easiest way is what our ancestors did is our ancestors practiced because there was nothing else for them to do, a time-restricted eating diet. Yep. They only ate for a minimum amount of time each day. We know if we have metabolic flexibility, we'll start making ketones about eight hours after our last meal. We'll start producing them. Mm -hmm. 
So, and those ketones send a signal to uncouple mitochondria. So, in general, the longer that ketone signal occurs in a 24-hour cycle, then the better you're going to do. Now, how long is good? Well, most of the work by Matheson out of the NIH, it looks like a six-hour eating window may be the best. There's been no benefit shown in a four-hour eating window. Mm -hmm. I do a two-hour eating window for half the year, um, which I've done now for, this will be my 25th year. Uh, so meaning you you don't eat for 22 hours of the day. Correct. And You'll then I eat all my calories in two hours, the OMAD diet. Okay. And we, we talked about it here. You, you don't want to, there's no evidence that our ancestors were always in ketosis. Mm -hmm. um, and I take, I break during the weekend and just take another meal. But you look at hunter-gatherers, most of them never eat until 10, 11, 12. Because uh, they got to go get their food. They got to go get the food. It's like, you know, I, Tell my patient, when you think our ancestors crawled out of the cave and said, what's for <laughs> breakfast? There isn't any breakfast. Mm -hmm. you know, there's no refrigeration. There's no storage system. you got to go find it. Mm -hmm. And you were designed to go find it. The other cool thing is the microbiome and the wall of the gut needs rest. And mm -hmm. people forget that digesting food and absorbing food A lot of energy. is hard work. Yep. And the average American, uh, by Sasha Pounda's work out of San Diego, average American eats 16 hours a day. Average American. I mean, that seems to track. Like you eat from the moment you wake up till yeah. the moment you go to sleep. Yeah. And you're getting eight hours of sleep at best. That, yeah. that tracks perfectly well. Yeah. So there is, there is no downtime. There's no repair time. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, even... Even, even a car has to go in for downtime. Even, even an airplane has to go in for downtime. And it's this repair time that if you, if you really believe Hippocrates, and I certainly have come to accept it, you got to spend most of your attention on your gut and the wall of your gut. And if you pay attention, then you'll be fine. You know, Hippocrates believed that all of us had a, a green life force energy, mm -hmm. um, very California speak, um, that wanted a creature to have perfect health. Mm -hmm. But there were external factors that were keeping that green life force energy f from being expressed. So Hippocrates believed the physician's job was to be a detective and figure out what were those external factors, mm -hmm. teach the patient to remove them, and then the green life force energy would take care of it. Now, that sounds really hokey. It sounds a little woo, right? It's really it sounds, woo, woo sounds woo, but you know. But what he didn't know is that, that green life force energy, which probably called the brown life force energy, mm -hmm. it was the microbiome.